um, we learned how to do, um, Hey YouTube, I'm back as promised. It's your girl Charlene. I'm here to talk to you about second semester. So second semester was totally different as you actually take on the role of a nurse. Um, our clinical facilities were more hospital based versus long term care facilities. We were had 12 hour shifts versus six hour shifts. And you really have to go in and do your part. Uh, I will talk about the clinical experience in a completely different video, but I just wanted to talk to you about what second semester entailed. So, as always, I have my binder. This is my second semester binder. Okay. Um, not quite as big as first semester, but still big. Um, so, basically, I broke it up the same way versus in my systems. So, I said I use uh dividers this time but my systems each have a section so we started off talking about chronic illness and we went i'm oh, sorry chronic illness to respiratory and from there we went into ob cardiac fluid and electrolytes which is major diabetes gu gi immune cancer heme um and then perioperative musculoskeletal and we ended with mental health which was totally different um, than anything that we've ever learned. Like I said, in semester one, it's more CNA, PCA work. In semester two, you really get into it. So, book-wise, so first semester, we go over fundamentals. Second semester, second semester and third semester, we will use this book. It is Medical Surgical Nursing. This is the book that we use. As you see, I have nice and neatly organized my book with tabs. It, okay? And then... We use that for all the body systems, as well as the pediatric book, um, this book, the James book. This book is actually very resourceful. If there's stuff in the in the med-surg book that you don't quite understand, use the pediatric book. It breaks it down so much more simpler. Also, uh, my program is integrated. So instead of doing like OB for so many weeks, pediatrics for so many weeks, mental health for so many weeks, it's all integrated. Um, when we do med surge and we go over GIGU issues, we go over them for the adult as well as for the pediatric patient. Um, and some things overlap, like mental health kind of overlaps with cardiac a little bit. Um, what I mean by that is because of the drugs. So there are certain drugs you use for a, a cardiovascular issue that you would also use for a mental health issue. So these are things that you have to consider when you're talking about medication administration and when you're talking about medication education for the patient. So, just tip. So, children's book. Um, and then, maternal newborn. So, I started, I changed my tabbing, guys. I got a labeler, thanks to Nurse Nicole. <laughs> I actually like this book because it's pretty plain cut and dry. It's very simple. It doesn't have a lot of fluff. What I don't like about this book is, sorry, my watch. What I don't like about, about the book is it doesn't have questions at the end of the chapter. That bothers me. Um, psych. <laughs> so, as you see, I have not tagged this book yet. I have not even, like, really, you know, dove into this book really well because my psych instructor is very, very, very informative. She knows everything backwards and forwards she knows all drugs uh, she's called the the drug nazi that's what they call her because she knows every freaking drug you can think of the generic name trade name side effects therapeutic effects contraindications she knows all of them and I, okay and the last book is understanding ekgs so we had our first ekg lesson last semester and you basically just went over how to read the strip you know, what the PQRS T waves mean, what it means to have an elevated T or a depressed T wave. How do you count it to see if the person has a normal heart rate? Um, or if you, um, we didn't really go over dysrhythmias um, at all. He just basically taught us how to read the strips. And so it was very, very, very informative. I was able to go to clinical and apply it and it helped me a lot. It would tell me if my patient had a dysrhythmia um like i have a lot of patients that had afib and it it's totally confusing just the fyi <laughs> it's confusing when you're taking a patient's heartbeat and or you're taking their pulse and then 
it goes from like 80 to 50 to 30 to 50 to 80 to 110 to 70. Like I'm going all over the place, but that's kind of how it is. It's just all over the place. So uh, I would pull their EKG strips. Second semester was actually, it was up and down. It started with Hurricane Harvey. I'm not sure. I'm sure most of you have seen it on the news or heard about it but it impacted us greatly down here in this area like I said I'm still displaced I'm still not back at home um we pretty much lost everything um that that we had if not by the water and the rain then by mold and so a lot of my classmates lost cars a lot of them were also displaced and my school really came through thank you thank you thank you so much because they provided us with books if we needed them. They helped us find scrubs. Whatever we needed, they supplied. And so that's, you want a program like that. You want a program where you matter to your faculty and your staff and your college because they those people came through. They even bought my baby Christmas presents. They, they gave us gift cards for gas. Like whatever we needed, it was there. And so although it was rough and tough, you know what I'm saying? We were able to pull through. So um, failing exam. This would this goes back to October. So exam two was our hardest exam. This exam was crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. I believe every semester there's one exam that's meant to kind of knock you off your off your feet just so it can kind of keep you on your toes. And so that would be exam two. The problem with that is my twin had her baby. Yay! beautiful baby okay and then <clears throat> she had complications like a week later or so from the pregnancy and so the night before my final my, my exam not my final but before my exam um we had to take her to the emergency room and she had to have emergency surgery and so I was up late at night I had the children I, we didn't get home until almost 11 30 at night and so I'm trying to study but of course my mental is jacked because my twin has to have surgery while I'm sitting here in front of this computer. And I knew when I sat down, I was not ready and I was not going to do well. I was praying to God that I just passed. Like, please, dear God, let me pass. <laughs> and I did not. I made a saving. I knew before I even checked my grade, I knew I failed. I ended up making a 71 and I cried like a baby. Um, I sure did. And I'm pretty sure y'all are like, why were you crying? You are an adult. Well, when you dedicate your life to something and you're not uh, you're not just studying this stuff just to pass a test you're studying it to understand because when nobody else is in that room and it's just you and that patient and i'm gonna tell y'all some stories about that um then you have to know what you're talking about you have to know what to do if the patient does something you have to know how to respond there's nobody that's going to be there to help you and so i knew i was not ready but i knew the information my class had a really big issue with this exam because we spent about five lectures going over cardiovascular because the lectures kind of got extended because they were, there was so much information. And then this took up one of our skills lectures. So that was a, a total five lectures. We spent 35 minutes on fluid and electrolytes. And I would say 75% of the test was fluid and electrolytes. <laughs> Horrible, but you know, what can you do? What can you do? You know, you, if you fail an exam, you have to go through remediation. I did not know what they looked like. So I was like, let me just go. And so my teacher referred me to a therapist because when we went through the questions, she would ask me, cause they, they'll go, what they do is they print off the things and they'll show you the questions you missed. And you have to check whether you're like, no, I had no idea what this was or yes, I knew, but I changed my answer or, you know, whatever the case may be. I would read the question and I would answer it. And then she'd be like, well, no, you picked such and such. And so we, it happened so many times. She, she would ask me questions and I would just tell her the answer. And then she was like, but you, why did you choose such and such? And I was like, I, I, I was not even there. I was mentally not there. And so it was very clear that I emotionally had a lot going on. And so she referred me to a therapist. <laughs> she referred me to a therapist, y'all. And honestly, it was very nice. I talked to the school therapist. We had a great, the books move y'all, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, uh, we had a great conversation and all was well. 
after that i did fine grades was going back up um my final y'all my grandfather passed the day before my final i repeat my grandfather passed see we knew he was passing but we didn't know that fast when they told us he was in transition um you know we were at the hospital you know going in and out and seeing him and checking on him he was still talking moving around and no, not moving around he was still talking and kind of in and out and you know i was just like just please hold on until after my final just please but i kind of knew that he wouldn't and so me and my squad were studying and they were saying you know y'all need to come they're giving him 24 to 48 hours i was like okay cool 24 to 48 hours that's after my exam because this is the day before my final and I text my family and I was like, do not tell me if he passes. My final is in the morning. I will just find out then. I'm staying off of social media. Don't anybody tell me if he passed. Of course, what does my sister do? Y'all, he just died. Right. So I'm trying to study with the girls. It wasn't happening. It was not. It was just my, and this is so huge for us guys because we hadn't had anybody die in my family other than my aunt, which happened in 2013, 12, 13. It's been a while. We had anybody die before this since like 1989, 1990. It's been forever since someone died in our family, especially that close. That, no. So this was huge for us. Um, and it still doesn't resonate sometimes. Anyways, this video is going way left. But I just wanted to update y'all on what happened second semester. Um, I'm about to make a clinical video next because I know a lot of you want to know what happens in clinical. Simulation and skills wise. So basically, we learned how to do IVs. How to start an IV. How to run an IV. How to do IV piggyback. We learned how to do Foley's. We learned how to do NG tubes. Um, suctioning, trach suctioning. Yeah, so it, it, this semester was awesome. I loved everything about it, except all the external bull crap that's going on. But it also was very rough. In the end, we lost seven classmates. So hopefully we do not lose anymore because it really does suck to see them go. I love all my classmates, every last one of them. And I'm hoping and praying we all make it and we finish strong. So that is second semester in a wrap. I'm about to talk to y'all about clinical and then try to just give y'all some inside scoop on some other stuff, some random whatnots. Okay, bye-bye.